Hi there, I hope you are well. Today I want to talk about finding your creative voice and style and honing it. So yeah, this is of course such a big part of being a creative. It's your creative identity, it's who you are as a creative, it's your creative work, it's your creative direction. So yeah, I really wanted to get into it today. And to do that, I wanted to bring you out into the forest because it's such a big part of my creative style. You'll find the forest and nature in the colors that I use, in my web copy about my own creative work, where I talk about the path and the journey and the route and direction, all of those kind of words. And also, of course, there are a lot of actual nature in photography and in my videos as well. So we're going to talk about five exercises that you can do to develop your creative style. And this goes for whether you are a writer, if you are a photographer, an artist or anything like that. So yeah, let's dig in. So when you are trying to find your creative style, when you are honing your creative voice, I think it's always important to start with whatever comes natural to you, what already feels easy. And we might look past this because it feels like whatever comes easy, natural, that isn't really a style, that isn't really a voice, that's just how you do things. But that is actually a great foundation to start with and to build upon as you are finding and honing your style. So what I want you to do here is to look at the things you've already created that is sort of in, in, the, in the sphere of the work that you want to do. So if you are a photographer, for example, take up your phone and scroll through the photos you have taken. The quite casual things like snapping a photo when you're out for something or taking a photo of a nice cup of tea, for example. So, just look at what have you been taking photos of? How have you been taking those photos? What are you already drawn to? And if you're a writer, look at the casual kind of writing you've been doing when you haven't really been trying very hard. Look at your journaling, look at your um, emails you've been sending, the casual type of writing that you're already doing and look for trends, look for the things that you're already doing. Maybe you are prone to rambling a bit and you can actually use that as a creative style. Maybe you are prone to digging into the feelings, for example, or maybe you are great at using adjectives, just as an example. Or if you are an artist, look at the things you've been doodling in the margins. Maybe you always make very round curves, for example, or maybe you put smiley faces on everything. And you can see that, see what you're already doing that comes natural, what feels easy. If you think about doing something within your craft, what would be easy for you to do? Because that is a great starting point to start off with, using your strengths and using the things that just, that just comes natural. There's nothing wrong with that and I actually think that that's how we can use the things that we already are, the things that we already know, and to build something great upon that. And that's also going to be more likely to come from you, come from your personality, the skills that you already have, and to build upon them to develop your style. So let's start there. So the second exercise is to gather things that inspire you and try to look for common threads. So what I want you to do is actually gather five to ten things that inspire you so we can look at what they have in common. So if you are a photographer, for example, this might be another photographer you're inspired by or a couple of photos that you're inspired by. If you're a writer, it might be blog posts or books that inspire you or if you're an artist might be pieces of art that inspire you and actually gather them so if it's digital you can make a pinterest board or if you have a stack of books put them before you and just so you can see them together and see how they compare and contrast to each other and then i want you to journal about this 
So look at the things, start looking, okay, what do they have in common? What are the common things that they all have or most of them have? Maybe it's the colors in the photos, maybe it's the kind of photos, maybe, for example, you're in, inspired by nature, um, or maybe it's more, more refined, maybe it's something about the light or something about the, the style uh, in the writing or the type of story that they tell or the type of character in the book, for example. So just try to make a list of things that speak, come out to you when you're looking on these, uh, of these things. What do they have in common? So what you might notice here is that you're inspired by quite diverse things, or maybe they group into two groups or three groups that you're inspired by. So identifying these can also be helpful. So maybe you're inspired by a tape, type of portrait photography, but you're also inspired by a type of interior photography. And it might be that you want to mix these styles to create your own style. So if you find that there are different groups, that can be something to take note of as well. Write that down and see that, okay, maybe there are some things from this group that I want to pick out. And maybe there are some things for, from the other group that I want to pick out. And what are those things? Just list them down. If you have adjectives that you can list down, that is great. Or actual things that is in, in the works that you're looking at. So that is the second exercise. The third exercise is to consider your other interests, values and your personality traits. They aren't necessarily connected to the craft that you want to develop a style in and a voice in, but they are part of who you are and that will influence your style as well. So nature is that for me. Nature is an interest for me and it's also part of who I am. It's how I live and how I've grown up and it's just yeah it's a part of me and to talk about creativity out in nature is not the most obvious choice to make but it's a choice that reflects who i am and it will make me stand out from some other people who are talking about creativity as well so what i want you to do is to again journal down okay what are your other interests in life what are some values that are really important to you? What are some personality traits that you feel defines who you are? So it doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one, uh, correlation here. So let's say, for example, if you are a gentle, introverted human, that doesn't mean that your art has to be like that. It can also be a way for you to balance and maybe be more expressive in your art than you are in the rest of your life. So it doesn't have to be that they, they should be the same, but they relate to each other somehow. And your other interests, your personality, your values are going to play into your creative work as well. So just getting these out and getting these, looking at what they are, can help you identify what things you want to bring into your creative style and voice as well, and what, how they might affect that. So write it down, write down your interests, your values and your personality traits as well. So the fourth exercise is to pick a couple of words that you feel describe the style that you want to have. So if you have done the first three exercises, if you looked at what comes natural to you, if you have looked at the things that inspire you and finally the other interests and values that you have, then you already have quite a lot there to draw from. So if you journal out these three things, then look through the things that you have written about them and look for words that come back again and again and again. And also look for things that stand out to you as like, right, this is what my style really is about. I really want this to be like this. Write down all of these words and then you're going to pick three to five words that you feel describe the style that you want.
So preferably use adjectives, it's the easiest. So this can be words like authentic, modern, natural, elegant, cute, quirky, these types of words. And you want to choose words that complement each other, that doesn't say the same thing. So natural and elegant, for example, they tell quite different stories. And if they are brought together, they tell a third story. So you want to use words that contrast each other and to, that together bring something new that is your style. The last exercise is maybe not so much an exercise, but it's the creative work going forward that will develop your style. So we can think and think and analyze, but when it really comes down to it, to actually create and actually experiment and do and keep learning, that is going to be the thing that really helps you develop your style and voice. So over time, as you create more and more things, you're going to get more and more clarity about what this really is about, what your style is, and it's going to keep developing and you're going to keep learning things about it. So the best thing you can do when you have these, this clarity that you've gotten so far to just keep creating, just create and experiment. Experimenting especially when we are seeing our style changes or if you are developing your style for the first time. Try to not get too locked into one version too early on. Try to keep an open mind, try to keep experimenting. If you're using your words as a guide, try to see, okay, what could this look like in different type of ver versions? and have fun with it as well. Always, always have fun with this work as well. So yeah, keep learning as well. Use learning about your craft and taking classes, courses, that kind of thing as a toolbox. Toolbox that you can use to bring out different things in your style and in your work. So those word exercises that you can do to develop your creative voice and style. And before we go, I'm also going to say that I am now booking creative coaching clients for autumn and to develop style and voice and figure out what makes you unique is part of what I do and part of what I help my creative coaching clients with. So if you're interested in some one-to-one -one coaching, check out my coaching packages. I'll leave the link down below. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a little like if you did. If you're new here, hello and welcome. You can subscribe down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye!